Hello, everybody, and welcome to Outside the Box, the podcast devoted to supporting Central PA small business. I am your host, Derek Bixler, realtor and digital marketer, born and raised right here in Central PA. Uh, I grew up on the Hill in Harrisburg, went to Mechanicsburg High School, went to Penn Tech up in Williamsport for college, came back here right afterwards, have been here ever since, working my tail off. And today we have a guest expert with us on insurance. He's going to tell us a whole bunch of weird things and overlook things that we can insure that we never think about and uh, could be just weird and fun, could be something we actually should be adding to our homeowner's insurance or whatever the case may be. I don't know. That might not be one of the examples, but we're going to go through some things with Bill. Before that, a couple of announcements uh, right after this episode. For those of you on Clubhouse, I won't get into what Clubhouse is. You can Google that or DM me and I'll explain that. But if you are on Clubhouse, uh, um, uh, every Thursday, one to two, which would be right after this episode, we're going to have a room open and it's going to be kind of a, uh, an interactive version of this. So it's an audio only platform where we can all talk to each other, um, exchange ideas, uh, promote each other's businesses, uh, share, promote, inspire, all that kind of stuff. And it's going to be evolving over time since it's new. The platform's new. The room is new. I'm new to it. So if you get in early with it, you can kind of help us, uh, figure out and and do the format and figure out exactly what we're going to be doing in there. So that's right after the show. I am a, Agent Derek on Clubhouse if you want to follow me. Uh, anything else? Replays on YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, iTunes, all that stuff soon. If you have any questions for me or Bill, you can put them in the comments. I usually don't see them. I see a couple of comments right there, but I don't have time to look at them right now running all this stuff, Bill. So we're going to let those sit for the moment. Um, and if you want to subscribe to our email, which has all the the episode in, uh, announcements, the networking mixer invites, and the exclusive special offers, head over to uh, supportcentralpa.com to get all that kind of stuff. And with all that said, I'll bring in Bill Brennan of Goosehead Insurance in Camp Hill. And Bill, hello. Thanks for being with us. Uh, just say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Derek. Uh, I, first off, thanks so much for having me. Excited to do this and uh, hopefully make it a little fun and learning type of uh episode for us I and mean, the world of insurance can always be boring but we're going to try to make it a little fun today so uh but uh, as uh, derek said my name is bill brennan um actually grew up i'm a coal region guy so i grew up in shimokin pennsylvania um but i i uh migrated to the big city um where i live in it currently is edders pennsylvania with my wife maurice um and my two daughters eliana who's seven and uh, my youngest daughter who is seven months old natalia so um, then I have uh, my office, uh, Goosehead Insurance, up in, um, in Camp Hill, PA. Um, been owner of this business for about two years. Well, actually, a little more than two years now at this point. Um, but I uh, work with a franchise, Goosehead Insurance. So we're based out of uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, we are quickly becoming one of the largest uh, in independent insurance brokers in the country. Um, and, uh, you know, the goal is we try to do it through education, try to do it through fun and try to tell clients, uh, you know, how things are, uh, what they can do to ensure, ensure their world, I guess is the best way to word it. Yeah. And I think one of the things that sets you apart from maybe some other, uh, insurance, insurance agents or people that people know is that you can sell different products, um, not just one State Farm nationwide. I don't know why I didn't mean to call any out. I don't like to name drop on here, but those are the first two that come to mind, but all the big ones and maybe you sell those too, but you could sell a whole bunch of different products from different uh, service providers. So you can, you, we've met before and you seem to know a ton about all the different ones and you, you know, you're not brainwashed by the one company. You can say, well, that company is terrible for this. You should use this other company for that thing. Um, so that's what sets you apart. Right. I, and I think that's the biggest thing. I think that's what really drew me to, to Goosehead. I mean, my prior business experience um, lended a lot of insurance companies to call me. They all wanted me to open up an insurance agent. So insert big brand here. Um, you know, they, they all wanted us to, to have a, an agency because of my, I, I worked for Enterprise rent a company back in the day. So that's kind of where it all came from. Um, and then I, in Goosehead, that's what drew me. It, like I said, it's the power of choice. I mean, I have over, it's, it's like 35 carriers. It's a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, but we always tell people, um, you know, one of the biggest things for us is you, you have people who have unique situations, right? You have... You have those square pegs that, that certain companies are trying to fit into that round hole. And I got five companies that love square pegs, right? And, and you know, and that's, what, that's what I tell people. It's like, you know, you're, 
every situation, you know, you, you might not fit the, the, the perfect uh, client for, for that company. So your rates will reflect that, and, you know, by talking to a broker like ourselves, you know, we can basically try to take it out and look to see what situation you're in and see if we can find a better spot for you, a better fit. Yeah, that's obviously a benefit with being with somebody like Goosehead. Um, so for anybody that might not be familiar with Goosehead, it's an awesome name and it sticks in my head. And as soon as somebody said, you should talk to Bill with Goosehead, and I was like, yeah, I'll go to, I couldn't forget it. So um, tell us a little bit about Goosehead and what, where they're based and, and their background. So, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I, I'll try to tell the story as best I can, but, um, you know, our founder, Robin Jones, um, you know, she, uh, one day back in 2003 said, you know, I think I can do insurance a little bit better. She had a claim at her house is, is the story I was told and, or, you know, and, uh, the insurance agent never told her about this water backup coverage. And it's a coverage that happened. And it was like a $50,000 loss that she had. And, you know, she told her husband, she said, I'm going to start an insurance company because I think I can do it better. Um, and then we, um, you know, the company continued to grow and grow and grow. And then they felt like they had a model, um, you know, one of the reasons why we met is, you know, Goosehead really kind of specializes working with people who are in the process of buying a home. Our technology really lends to helping out realtors, but most like uh, most as well as mortgage lenders, you know, during that process, because our tech is just different. Right. And, and also sometimes when your people are trying to buy a house, they need to have a certain premium and, you know, that's very important. So being able to, to, chop it out to different carriers to make sure the client's getting the best policy for the best price. Um, but then, you know, Rob and Mark, you know, decided to franchise it. I, I, I don't know the exact number of states that we're in now, but it's somewhere in the thirties. Um, we have over a billion dollars in written and premium. Um, and the name, so the Goosehead name came from their granddaughter is, uh, her name is Lucy and her nickname was Lucy Goosey. So when they came up with the franchise name, um, you know, they said, you know, Goosehead is kind of fun. And uh, so they did that. And uh, I, I, our CEO, Mark, he did say one time he believes his daughter, or his granddaughter now has a bigger head because of that. You know, she has this really huge company that's named after her. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And I don't, I don't want to make it about me, but I, anybody that follows my social media knows that I call our daughter, our two and a half daughter, Lucy, I call her goose or the goose wow. or so it's, I can, I love that. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah. why it's stuck in my head when I heard the goose. Yeah, that's head. actually funny. I, got a, I don't think we talked about that before. That's actually interesting. No, that, that's <laughs> yeah, it's all over. I don't think people even know the real names of my kids <laughs> yeah that's great so um so and it sounds like it would be a beer or something that's the other thing i was thinking it would be yeah, a, a craft is, brewery or something there is one called goose island i think i think it's goose island ipa and i i always tell people like you can call me goose egg goose nose goose neck like just call like that's my <laughs> Right. You know, I don't care what you call me. I, and we do get, I do have some customers that definitely laugh about it, but um, you know, I, I always say it is memorable. Um, you know, and, and that's one of the things like people, you know, they always seem to remember it or get it close anyway. Yeah. And there's a great story behind it, obviously. And every time you tell it, you get better at it and it gets better and better. Um, so let's get into it and let's tell, we got 11 comments. This is great. I'm telling you, Bill, we don't have this many comments usually. So that's I know awesome. The insurance guy brings all the fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. as you start to go into your little presentation here and we switch to your phone because the computer, like sometimes there were glitches or whatever. So you have your presentation there. We won't be able to see it, but you yeah. can go through your bullets and tell us some weird things that we can ensure that we might not think about. Um, and I will try to also kind of put up some little graphics as we go if I can type fast and I will start looking at the comments so that if there are questions we can answer them as we go so with that bill go ahead in and take it away yeah well you know it's uh, I'm really disappointed I couldn't get the slideshow to work because I really had this big lead up joke to it because I, I my wife and I used we love the show Big Bang Theory and Sheldon had the show fun with flags right a very exciting topic of, of flags right so um, I, I labeled it fun with insurance and, and tried to play my funny spin on it. Um, but I thought, you know, I thought we'd start off, we'll call it a little on the serious side. Uh, most people know me, uh, know that I'm, I like to be a little funny, um, but I also do like to educate when it comes to insurance. But figuring that we're on the Central PA Small Business website, I figured I'd start off with just some bullet points on commercial insurance. You know, some things that are overlooked, especially to our small to medium sized businesses. 
um, and, and just things that people don't think about every day that they should definitely, you know, have their insurance agent look at. Um, we'd always be happy to take a look and see um, as well. But, you know, it, it's just things that can cost small businesses a lot of money and can end up, you know, end, end up putting them in a really bad situation. Um, so I just figured I'd start off with a couple serious topics and then we'll get to the fun ones. Um, you know, so uh, so one of the first ones I came up with is cybersecurity. Um, you know, cyber attacks, they target smaller businesses because fewer, they have fewer resources and they don't realize the risk. Um, you know, and that that is just something that a lot of people don't think, well, you know, they're not going to target little old me here in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Um, and, and that's that's not the case. They actually do target little old you in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, because they know that you don't have the, the cybersecurity, you know, protections that you need to have out there. And you really should be working with an expert in that field, um, you know, that could really help, um, you know, mitigate those risks. And then you should also have the coverage just in case it, it could happen. Um, I, the statistics that I read that, that you read, I get insurance things all the time. You know, the average cost of a claim of a cybersecurity breach is a little over $2 million. So if you can think about if you don't have insurance coverage for that and you don't have protection, I mean, how many people do you think, you know, um, that, I mean, that, that would be devastating to to just about every any business. So um, just definitely something to think about. I mean, most people remember the Target breach and Kroger was another one that, that was a big breach. And, you know, those are the type of things where they're stealing pay, uh, client information or, or anything along those lines. Um, I, I the next one I, I talked about because that when, when I did work for enterprise I might have made this mistake as a branch manager one time, um, but non-owned auto coverage is a big thing, right? You um, every now and then you your small business and you tell your employee, hey, I, I can you run this over to this place or do that? And if you don't have non-owned auto coverage on your commercial insurance policy, um, and your employees drive their car and anything business related at all, you know that can, if there's something that happens, that can also really put your business at risk. Um, you know, if your employee gets in an accident, hurts somebody, and they find out when they call their insurance company, it's not covered because they were driving, you know, because the adjuster is going to be like, well, what were you doing? Well, was, you know, my boss asked me to take this to, to this. And, you know, they, they could look at that as saying, hey, you're driving for work, and, you know, that's not covered. And then, the company's involved in lawsuit, the employee's involved in lawsuit, just doesn't lead to anything along those lines. Just something that's just, you know, generally overlooked. Um, not all the time, but, you know, it's just some, something you should always have checked. And then the last one is, you know, professional liability insurance. I mean, Derek, I'm sure as a realtor has one. I know I have several as an insurance agent. You know, it's it just kind of protects her from those unhappy clients, right? You know, um, I... Uh, we like to think that you're perfect and you don't like, you don't make mistakes, but we, we all, we all do. Trust me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'm very fortunate who said that anytime I issue a policy, I have, uh, we have a team that just basically checks for these mistakes because we don't want to pay out lawsuits and we don't want to enact our, our, our liability insurance. So um, I have, I have an extra set of eyes that reviews every policy I issue to make sure that this doesn't happen. Um it's also a very affordable coverage. Um, so, I mean, it's usually a few hundred dollars a year, um, you know, just something to just protect yourself. It's, you know, a couple million dollar liability policy is just something that I always recommend. So, so are all you know, these that are you, couple. are all these that you named, these are like riders or let's talk to me like I'm, I'm a, a layman. These are all riders or what do you call them that you attach to your main business policy or, or is the professional liability insurance the main policy and then you're attaching these other things to it or how does that all work in the first place? Yeah, most, most of them are endorsements. Um, a professional liability policy can be a standalone general liability policy type of deal. Um, but uh, cybersecurity, you know, most of those, you can get a cybersecurity policy um, but you know, most of them are, are endorsements on, 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 a, on a policy that just people should, should be looking at. And, and that's some of the things non-owned auto coverage is going to be, you know, generally on a commercial auto plan, um, but also can be available on a business owner policy as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Any more commercial ones? No, I, I, like I said, I like to keep that one short and sweet, you know, you know, this is, this is, uh, 
Yeah, I think the cybersecurity one is is definitely something that people might not think about or might think it's just included with their coverage or or whatever the case may be. Um, so I think that's one to, to definitely, does that add a lot of cost to the, the rest of the coverage? Or? No, not, not generally. I mean, these endorsements are, when you're talking in the world of what, what they could potentially pay out, it, it's a very small endorsement. Every and that could ruin your business. And the reputation yeah. just of if it happens, if you don't have the resources to deal with it the right way, your reputation is harmed forever. If you at least have insurances in place and can act and fix things and deal with it the correct way, then maybe you don't lose as much credit with your customers. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, just think about, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think Target was harmed too much. I mean, um, I, I speak for, I can speak for myself. I know where, I know my wife spends a little time at Target, so. Uh, <laughs> So, but I mean, you know, there for a while, you know, people were like, oh, I can't believe Target would get breached, you know, and, and that, I mean, that was a very, very costly situation for them. So, uh, yeah, luckily credit cards are pretty good now. My Capital yeah. One scream, half of my purchases get declined. <laughs> yeah. well, now, now we know what's in your wallet. Derek, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amongst other things. Yeah. All right. So what uh commercial, what are the other two? So we're done with commercial. What's the next yeah. category go you got for us? We're gonna go to homeowners and we're gonna we're gonna this is where we'll start to get into a little bit of the funny thing. Um, you know, people always say, Hey, why did my insurance agent ask me certain questions? Right. So I always say, um, I don't want to target certain dog breeds. So I'm just gonna say, imagine the scenario if you have an ineligible dog breed jumping on a trampoline next to an on-fence swimming pool with a diving board and slide combo, right? Those are, uh, those are, those are risks that insurance companies are looking to, uh, to, to, to protect against, right? So, you know, there are certain dog breeds that have a bad rap. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I, my goal is not to call any of them out. I don't need anybody getting upset with me over, <laughs> hey, my dog this and my dog that. I, I get it. Like, you know, I, I just, but the, just going by some... The point is that if uh, there are the breeds, everybody knows what it is, but you have coverages that, oh, yeah. so if their, their agency or their uh, carrier of choice doesn't ensure that particular breed, they could call you and you can find someone pretty Absolutely. much for everybody, right? I think I have, I think I have five carriers that, that don't care, you know, um, they, they just don't care. Some states like the state of Maryland actually doesn't ask that question. I am licensed in the state of Maryland as well. And they don't ask that question. Um, the carriers will still say, hey, if you know they have one, we don't, we're not interested. <laughs> sure, yeah. How much of a, so do those, to the ones that do allow it, do they charge a premium for it? Because obviously that's a, a market to go after. Well, actually, it's actually uh, interesting. Some carriers, if you do have a dog, they actually still charge a surcharge no matter what. No, no matter if it's a Shih Tzu or a, Akita, we'll call it. we'll call one. Uh, you know, Akitas generally appear on a on, on dog breed list. So, um, you know, it, it, they do charge. Sometimes it's twenty, thirty, forty dollars a year. It's usually not a lot of money. But you know, if you think about it, um, you know, a lot of people chocolate. I mean, labs can lead to claims. They're not on an ineligible dog breed list. But if you think about it, labs jump and lunge at people. If you you know, knock over somebody and they get hurt in your house because your dog jumped on them, like that's, that's your risk. So, um, you know, that's always something that we like to talk about. That's one of the main questions I ask right up front because I do want to know and I want to make sure that you're protected because if the insurance company doesn't know you have that dog and they bite somebody, um, that's just going to lead to a whole bunch of issues. So is sure. this ex exclusive for dogs? What other pets could you insure or like farms and animals? What, how do you do go about all that yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, there's special farm policy. It's funny you said that because, you know, everybody watched, I, well, I don't say everybody, but a lot of people watched Tiger King last year. So, um, you know, I, all, I do make that into my presentation. You don't have any tiger cubs laying around because you thought you could buy one for $2,000. So, um, but exotic pets. I've always like, wanted one. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Um, you know, we do ask, we do ask that question, you know, a lot of times it just comes up in conversation. You know, a lot of people have chickens. I know there's, there's one special guy sitting out there probably in the comments section that I know he has some chickens. Um, don't want to Who's call that? Him. We'll call him out. Well, we're going to call Is him, it Billy? We'll call him right, right away. So he's like mother hen over there. Um, so, um, 
but you know, it is questions that insurance companies want to ask. And as long as you're not doing a business thing, most of them will, you know, some sort of selling them, most insurance companies don't really care. Um, but you know, they call that an incidental risk, um, if you will. Um, but you, you know, if you have horses, if you have cattle, you know, you're going to be want to look into farm policies and depending on what you're doing on them, you might need a business policy as well. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of those, you know, that's one of the popular topics that people talk about because a lot of people, we love our dogs. Right. Um, but it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of make sure you're protecting the risk. Um, the other one I, I like to talk about is, you know, make sure you have some people have high end jewelry, art, electronic furs, Jordan rookie cards. Right. Every now, you know, all the people my age, we're all looking frantically searching in our in our basement to see if we have this Jordan rookie card worth seven hundred thousand um, dollars. You know, you got to make sure that those things are scheduled on a homeowner's policy. Um, talking to your agent, most things have a sublimit, and I generally just throw out a term of fifteen hundred dollars. Every category is different. Um, a lot of insurance companies don't have um, endorsements for, you know, sports uh, cards and things like that. They have stamps, they have coins, um, but it is definitely something. Um, that we always talk to your insurance professional about that, um, trying to protect that risk, um, but also trying to, you know, maybe, you know, I have a couple carriers that I refer out to people. I'll say, hey, your insurance company doesn't like that, but this carrier specializes in collectibles. So you want to have a conversation with them. Um, this is the maybe somewhat other serious portion of the program, home inventories. So we always recommend that people have you know, take an inventory of things that they have. If they buy new furniture, if you buy a new television, keep that information somewhere safe, maybe on a spreadsheet, on a zip drive and put that in a safe, whatever it may be. Um, you know, it just makes the process, if you do have a claim, it makes it a little bit easier because my joke with people is just because you have the coverage doesn't mean they're going to write a check. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, know, you have to prove that you had the stuff too. And, well, actually, I had just till now forgot we got broken into when I was young in like third grade or something. Yeah. We went home. It was kids from the neighborhood, uh, grew up on the hill that broke in, took all my toys basically. So we went in, figured out all the toys were gone. So we, I remember we had to come up with this long list of stuff and it actually worked out for me because I was tired of all those old toys anyway. And I got this, pretty much my parents gave me uh, the insurance money to go replace all these toys. So I went out and got all new toys. Um, so definitely worth it to keep a ledger. We didn't, but I, I, I remember thinking, oh man, that's gone. Like long after the fact thinking, oh yeah, I missed that. Well, I'm never going to get the money back for that. So uh, having an inventory and knowing what you have in your house, especially if it's collectibles or jewelry or that kind of thing, um, for sure. You know, and like I said, if, you know, the, a common thing is, and I'll use like engagement rings as an example, right? You know, engagement rings can be very costly and most insurance companies have a sublimit of $1,500, right? So if you have a, $5,000 engagement ring and you know, the wife goes swimming in the ocean and that ring, she comes out and the ring's still in the ocean. The insurance company's gonna be like, sorry about your luck, right? You know, um, here's 1500 bucks. Good luck replacing it. You know, it, it's just the way things are. So, you know, that's something we talk about during the process um, and things along those lines. I see this question here from Zach. And I'm not going to attempt to say your last name, Zach. Uh, hopefully you're still watching out there. As a single first-time home buyer, what type of insurance plan or amount would be ideal? Okay. Yeah. So great question. Um, so replacement cost, replacement cost, replacement cost. So most mortgage companies won't allow you to do anything other than replacement costs. But understanding, um, you know, uh, Central PA is a good example, although the real estate market is a little crazy right now. So um, I used to use the example back in the day, you know, you have this 1200 square foot house that you're paying $150,000 for that the insurance company is insuring for 200,000, right? And just using round numbers here, um, insurance companies don't care what the market value is. They don't care what they're paying for the home. They only care what it costs to rebuild that home. So, I mean, that's definitely something that we, and replacement cost on contents, um, you know, that sort of stuff. 
Um, liability insurance is, is always something um, that I always preach about. Uh, it's the cheapest place to get liability insurance in case you were to get sued if something happens on your property, right? So $10 a year can get you like the max. So max out, right? Um, an amount would be ideal. I mean, it just depends on the property you're buying, depends on, um, you know, depends on what you have, right? If you have a home inventory and you have $200,000 worth of personal property, um, you know, that's stuff that you need to make sure you're trying to, to, to cover for that as well. Um, along the lines of policy types, it depends on the type of house, right? So um, traditionally, you know, a single family home is going to be written on an HO3 policy. Um, that's really boring insurance talk, Zach. Um, but uh, if you have a condo or a townhouse that the uh, HOA is covering the outside of the building, you, you can do an HO6 policy. Um, but that's up to you know the mortgage company insurance professionals to kind of guide you, make sure you're writing the same the right policy. Yeah. Hope that answers. Awesome. It. So, um, now do you know who Jesse Storm is? Jesse Storm. No, that doesn't ring a bell. No, he's commenting a lot. I was wondering if you knew him. No. I'm looking for a question of his. I'll find an actual question of his and bring him in later and, and uh, not bring him on, but I'll bring a question up. So continue with, uh, sorry, before I so another barged one, in there. For, their, for those first time home buyers. Now this one would have landed much better if my slideshow would have been up because, uh, you know, I, I talk about service line coverage and I, and I just put in there, when poop literally happens, right? So, uh, you know, I like to so keep, sewer line. Yes, yes, sir, or service line, sewer water line. You know, it's it's common in our area where these pipes break underneath our yard, and, and guess what? Those are your responsibility as a homeowner, um, and that's the coverage you can usually get for thirty, forty dollars a year. You know. Um, so here's a question. This is everybody watching right now. If they're a homeowner, or even if they're a renter, they probably get them. We all get from PA American Water or United Water or whoever the water or the township sewer, whoever it is, the authority, we all get those letters that say, do you want to buy that insurance? I'm assuming it's the same insurance for that. Are they better off going? Obviously, they're better off going to you and knowing what they're talking about and talking to somebody that knows about it. But is it kind of the same thing? Is that what they're asking? Is that a good deal? What should people do? So it's, it's usually, a, uh, so those things are usually a, a terrible deal for the consumer, right? Um, just because it's, I, you know, generally speaking, it's eight to $12 a month is usually what I hear, you know, so we'll just call it $10 a month. So about $120 a year for you to have that coverage. And a lot of times, I, I, well, I probably, sh I, I'm, I'm making an assumption here. If it's, uh, if it's the water company, they're only going to cover the water line. Right. So uh, you're paying one hundred twenty dollars a year for just the water line. Um, you know, with us, you're covering any underground line. So that could be water line, you know, sewer line, utility lines. It can be anything that's underneath the ground that if something happens, that can provide, you know, ten thousand dollars worth of coverage for less than three dollars a month. Those companies are buying these policies and reselling it to you. So that's kind of what it is. Sorry, Jesse Storm. Just uh, he's he just said the average cost to repair a sewer line is about fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. I don't know how if that's accurate, but I would guess that it's at least thousands. Um, because it's and oh, here's a good question. So, what yeah. age in our in Central PA? We've got a lot of aging inventory, and I've had this problem where we've had where we inspect, they send the camera through, and they've got to replace the line. Um, how old of a house is there? A certain like twenty years old, you should start worrying about it, or uh, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, so, you know, those newer homes, you, you, you kind of hope that, you know, if it's a new build, you hope that those are going to last a little longer. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, I always... Or hope well, they even put it there to begin with. Here yeah. and there, it's, it's not even there. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I advocate for it on every policy if they have those types of services. So, well and septic are not included in that stuff. So, we have a homes that have well and septic, so that's not that's not part of that coverage. Um, generally speaking, the mo majority of claims that I see come across my desk are homes built before 1970. Um, you know, that's it's, it's a kind of a rule of thumb. Um, a lot of insurance companies will put a limit on homes built before 1970 as well. So insurance companies are in a numbers game and they say, wow, we fixed a lot of sewer lines and homes built in 1950. We should probably do something about that. Um, and they do do something about that pretty quickly. So 
Um, but there are there are some carriers out there that that don't care about age and you know just kind of go with it. Yeah. yeah, and and Jesse's not too far. I mean, I I had one or two claims up that high. Um, I've had a few companies, you know, I, I've had a few clients that had claims they were six, seven, eight thousand um, dollars. But I I have seen as high as fifteen. Yep. Yeah. Definitely not, not too yeah, far off. Depends on the house. Sure. Depends on the, uh, the the length of the distance between the road and the house, right? If it's a mile up the driveway, you probably have a septic. But, you yeah. house, hell, you might want to worry about that a little more. <laughs> so yeah, but, totally. So what's the next one? Um, so so now I was going to go to. So I figured we go to some of the other fun types of insurance. Once again. You know, this one here it would have landed so much better on the screen, but wedding and special events. Yes, I'm talking to you, COVID wedding folks. Sorry, it's too late now, right? So, um, you know, a lot of people had their weddings postponed, canceled, um, you know, due, due to COVID. Um, and the insurance companies have quickly caught up to that. Um, so, you know, why, why is it a good idea to purchase that type of insurance? Um, obviously, liability risk in anything. If you start serving alcohol, start doing things like that, it, it increases the level of risk. But it can also, if for unforeseen circumstances, um, the wedding has to be postponed or canceled, um, you know, uh, uh, once again, a few hundred dollars, you know, can save you thousands and thousands of dollars of deposits to the venues and, and things along those lines that you would lose. Um, you know, uh, insurance companies with COVID, if you purchased it, I mean, there, there's a lot of language going on right now that, that, that you can see. But, you know, generally, if you purchased it in 2019, you know, November, December-ish, you know, before we knew that it was going to be a pandemic um, that shut everything down, you know, they, most insurance companies still paid out for it. Um, you know, we're still working on trying to file, you know, pay those claims. Um, but now it's insurance companies have categorized it as a known event. That's the words that they use. So they know that this event could occur. It's likely to happen. So if COVID is the reason that it's canceled, sorry about your luck. Um, but, you know, it is definitely something that we, there are a lot of great carriers out there. One of the carriers that I have that makes it super easy is Travelers. Um, I mean, I, I've written them for $250, right? Just depends on how many people, how late the party's going, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, but you, you know, got to my question. My, my question was going to, you got to my question. My question was going to be, what does this run? And so for 250, that's why wouldn't you add that on? And uh, weddings have a lot of, it's pretty much a get drunk party for most weddings. So, um, it's, it would be a great coverage because I, yeah, people get hurt at weddings all the time, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's something that you just want to protect that lawsuit. Of, you know, hey, you know, if something happens, people go for everybody. Okay, well, I'm going to sue the venue where I got hurt. I'm going to sue the people who invited me. You know, boy, you're off the Christmas card list at that point, I promise. Um, you know, but, you know, just those type of those type of things. Um, but also for small business owners, right? At some point, fingers crossed, we get back to normal, right? Um, and you start hosting events at your, at your, at your building. Um, you know, if you, if you serve alcohol or you do things along those lines, um, it's definitely something I know business have open houses all the time and they start serving wine and beer and whatever. If somebody leaves and something happens that that can fall back on you as a business owner. So we, we always recommend that. Um, I have a client who she hosts a lot of these type of events and, you know, I, I was trying to dig up the last policy I wrote for it. It was like $125, you know, that could cost her millions in a lawsuit if something would happen. So, you know, thankfully, um, you know, she understands that risk and, 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 and we talked about it and she, she usually does it every time. So, um, but yeah, that's something that we always like to kind of talk about. And um, pet insurance is the other one. So, for that ineligible dog breed, we can insure them too. So, <laughs> so going back to those those dogs that like to bite people, they still need they still need vet care. So, um, you know, it's something that's a little unique. Um, there are a lot more carriers out there now than there used to be, um, and you know, these policies can run $20, 30 forty dollars a month. 
um, on average. And, you know, it's not going to cover everything. It's just like health insurance. You're going to still have deductibles. You're going to still have things. But it can really help lessen that cost of owning a dog. Um, and some of those routine shots and things like that can, can be fully covered. So, you know, it is something that I'm getting a little bit more versed on it. I, I quite frankly, so is medical insurance for pets pretty much, it's pretty much what it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've heard of it before, but that, that's cool that you, you have a product for that. And I'm sure somebody out there listening has a pet and that is not insured and everybody loves their pet. That's why I don't have another dog is because I love my last dog too much. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> and and, and it just just like well, I, you know, I, just like health insurance, uh, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole here. But you know, um, a lot of times people are like, oh, I, I need to get pet insurance because my dog has cancer. Well, it's too late, right? You know, it's it's one of those things. You know, it's, insurance companies aren't going to say, oh yeah, let's take that because it's going to cost us thousands of dollars. No, they're going to, you know, they want it to get the dog when it's healthy, collect those premiums, and then. When the, when the time comes, you know, just like anything else, they're, they're going to be there to pay out um, and, and things along those lines. But, yeah, I think I have three or four carriers that offer pet insurance, and, and it's a great coverage. It, it really is. If, if What about exotic pets? Yeah, not, not normally. It's usually – it's usually the normal ones. The <laughs> I shouldn't call them normal. That's that's a uh, bill. That was bad. You know, the, the dogs, <laughs> birds. You Whatever. Know. You can say no, it's typical. Let's use typical yeah, pets. So yeah. what if somebody has a 20-foot uh, python? What kind of python? I used to have a snake. All right. Let's say a red-tailed boa. I know the red-tailed boa is 10 feet longish. What if somebody has a 10-foot long snake? I can assure you, I, I have not even tried to ask. I, I usually only see dogs and cats on those applications, but uh, not not to say that it couldn't. I, I'd, I'd really have to go back and look at that one. Um, that, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> or birds, or parrots, or any of that kind of thing, because you can buy you you can buy pretty much anything on the internet. Any animal you want, you could go find it and get it. Yeah, the internet's a scary, scary world. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last, I mean, just the last kind of fun type of one that people don't think about often, but, you know, kind of related to COVID is, uh, you know, trip insurance. Um, you know, my, uh, my one, my one thing is, uh, I, I said, use a darn travel agent, people. Um, that, that was my words of advice. Um, I live with a travel agent and I, I, I know exactly, you know, the work that they do and they do it no cost to the consumer. But if you think about it, you know, especially with today's world of, traveling and things getting canceled and, and uh, you know, trip insurance. I'll, I'll use an example, a personal situation. Uh, my grandfather, um, many, many years ago, bought trip insurance for $68 for a cruise that they were on. Um, in Mexico, my grandfather went into congestive heart failure on a cruise ship, and he was flown on a private jet from Mexico to Miami, and then, you know, put up for hotel room, reimbursed for my grandmother for all these costs and everything along those lines for $68. Um, I mean, it was like a, it was a crate that the flight alone was $100,000, right? So, you know, it's just things that, you, you know, people don't think about um, and things along those lines that you want to make sure um, that you want to make sure, so, sorry, I'm being accosted for my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the things that people don't think about, um, you know, it's just we, we don't really. I mean, there are some companies that sell trip insurance and this is not a plug for for us, but it is something you should consider um, because it, it, it can save you thousands of dollars for, for, you know, a few dollars here and there. So, but yeah, I mean, that was kind of hopefully that was. So how do you if if someone is looking for insurance or, or maybe they're buying a house and they're shopping, do they come to you and you kind of do an interview process and then you can tell them the, all this insurance is the best for you. Um, how does that process go for people? Yeah. So I, I always say, um, you know, we, we like to do basically an insurance review at that point. Um, and the biggest thing is, you know, the discovery part. I, I usually like to take, you know, depending on how long it takes, usually 10 minutes is what I tell people. I can send you a form to fill out. And you're just going to look at that and go, I'm not, I'm not sending that to that guy. He's nuts. Because um, it's like four pages long and has all these questions. But if I go through it on the telephone, I get through all those four pages and it takes like 
five minutes uh, and leaves enough time for chit chat. So, you know, generally speaking, we're asking some of the questions that we talked about today. We're asking about the other risks that they might have. So you think of auto insurance, boats, RVs, motorcycle, you know, those type of things, you know, uh, flow, you know, they all do a great job of advertising bundling um, and bundling, you know, can save you money, um, you know, but sometimes bundling costs you money. And, you know, sometimes we're, I might put you with this company for auto and this company for home because the net overall cost is less, right? So, um, you know, some companies are really good at auto insurance and some companies are really good at home insurance. And, you know, sometimes they're not the same company. So, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that, that's we, what we get paid to do, person, you know, if you will. So, um, yeah, you know, like I said, and then after I do that, um, if you talk to, you know, some, some of our other Goosehead agents, they they always say, oh, I can get it all done in one phone call. I, I It's just not my style. I, I like to take all the information, put it into our system, you know, study which carriers are going to be the best, you know, try to come up with a plan. And then I usually try to set a time with the client for a day later, or a couple hours later and say, hey, let's. Let's set up a time to talk and, and do that educational session. It's usually 20 minutes, you know, depending on the number of questions. And, um, you know, at that point, they have all the information that they need. Yeah. And I want to, before we end it out here, I want to share when we met, you told me a little tip that I didn't really think of. It seems somewhat obvious, I guess, now that you brought it up to me, but the, the coverage, and maybe you can briefly uh, mm -hmm. go into it a little bit. The coverage that you have now will affect the cost of your coverage later, possibly. So if you get the minimum, 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 least car, auto, whatever coverage now, uh, when you go to renew it later or move to a different company next year or the year after, they look at what the coverage you had. And if you're always doing the bare minimum, they're going to charge you more. Is that correct? It's 100% correct. Yeah. I, 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 it's funny. I I, I was scared where you're going there, Derek. We talked a lot about a lot of things like that. <laughs> so, no, um, you know, so insurance companies look at there's multiple rating factors that go into insurance. And I, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to give you a couple and some of them aren't going to be, you know, even, you know, even hit on it. But um, insurance score is something, you know, basically a credit score for insurance companies. The zip code that you live in affects it, right? So if your neighbors are, are bad drivers, well, guess what? Then it's going to affect you as well. But the biggest thing that most people don't know about is prior liability limits. So you have these people who, you know, maybe bought insurance when they were younger and they're like, I just need the cheapest thing. So they go state minimum, 1535, you know, 15,000 bodily injury uh, per person, 30,000 total accident, 5,000 property damage. And then what they don't realize is the insurance companies start to look at you as a risk and they're, they, you know, you become an underinsured motorist. And, you know, if something happens, you know, it, it just leads to a lot of headaches. So if you have liability limits of 100, 300, 100, or 250, 500, 100 or higher, um, insurance companies just say, hey, this guy, uh, this guy's responsible, you know. And he seems super awesome. So we're just going to give him a little bit of higher tier rating, and it's just going to make the rates a little bit less expensive. See it happen all the time. So That's an awesome tip that I never thought about, and that could save people money right now that people can go out and look at their coverage and maybe up it a little bit, or the next time they re-up their auto, up it a little bit. Um, so that's awesome. Before we go out, we want to make sure everybody can find you. Where should they find you? I'll put your information up here, and you can add yeah. anything else that I don't have up there. So the, the easiest is, is, is obvious. My, my phone number, it's 717-797-2772. Um, Bill.Brennan at goosehead.com. That's also my email. That's my email address. You know, if you want to set a time, just shoot me an email. I'm always happy to talk. Even if I always tell people, I, I just, I love talk. And as crazy as it sounds, I love talking about insurance and I love making sure people know. Well, I mean, insurance, that's, there's three things about insurance. Everybody needs it. Nobody knows what the heck they have and they only care if something happens, right? So I rather, I, I'd rather take care of two and three up front. So at some point somebody goes, that, that crazy bill told me that if this happened, this would be covered. And, you know, that's always my goal when my clients, when I hang up with my clients and they say, Hey, we're going to go with that insurance policy. My goal is to know that, Hey, they, they might, understand that if something happens that, you know, it's, it's going to be covered or, you know, we talked about that or, or whatever it might be, because, you know, you always hear the complaints, oh, the insurance company didn't pay this and the insurance company didn't pay that. And I'm like, well, 
did you talk about it with your agent up front? You know, um, and then you know, it's hard to protect against everything, but at the same point, you know, we, we, we try to do that as best we can up front. I think that's great. And there, the personal touch always comes through and I'm going to leave your info up phone number, email and everything down there for everybody to see and reach out to you while I close it out with the announcements. Uh, if you're interested in a business spotlight, which is kind of like you're seeing here with bill, we do one of these episodes at a nice in-depth interview. And then we also do a behind the scenes spotlight at your location. Did Bill leave? Did he try to leave? I think Bill left. He could have stayed. All right. Well, we're closing it out. Anyway, if you're interested in a business spotlight, which also includes a networking mixer at your location, there he is. He's back. Are you back, Bill? I thought you left. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested in one of those uh, or knowing about our special offers, join our email list. You can just go to sportscentralpa.com and you can find everything having to do with our Facebook group and the podcast and the show and everything supporting Central PA small business at sportscentralpa.com. Uh, join our Facebook group. So we're live all different places on LinkedIn, which I'm super happy about. That's an application process. So now we're on there. I think this is the third or fourth episode on there. A lot of our comments were from there, Bill. So that's, that's a good thing you got to get in on one of those episodes, the first ones. Uh, but where was I going with that? Oh, so this is going everywhere. If you're not part of our Facebook group, head over to Facebook and uh, search for Central PA Supports Small Business. Join our group and a lot of good stuff happening in there, networking, business, handing out, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I am at DJ Derek on Clubhouse immediately following this episode, one o'clock to two o'clock. I'm trying to give myself a 10 minute buffer here so I can go to the potty and have something to drink. Um, and then we're going to be on Clubhouse, which for those of you who are unfamiliar, it's an audio only uh, chat platform, basically. So you can go on there and you can talk to each other via chat. That's a terrible way to describe it. But if you go on there and you get involved, I guarantee you will be addicted like the rest of us. Um, it's super fun, a super great way to network. We're all on there making awesome connections all over the world, frankly. Um, but today we're going to have a room in there talking about Central PA small business, and we're going to be coming up with the uh, format for that. So uh, head over there and join us there. And thanks for watching and listening. And thanks, Bill. Thanks for being here. See everybody. Say bye, Bill. I don't think he can hear. All right. Later, everybody. <laughs>